Hi guys, what is up? Today I'm going to be doing an updated ILS tutorial. Uh, a lot of people seem to enjoy it, so I'm just going to sort of go through uh, the same procedures again. Uh, I do need to mention this. Um, this is not about doing flaps, uh, speed coming in perfectly. I'm just here to show you how the ILS works. Um, this is for the Steam Edition. This is a brand new install of the Steam Edition. Uh, you, on my boxed version, I have PMDG, Orbix, all the rest of the add-ons plugged in. This is literally just FSX, bare minimum. Um, so, yeah, right. So we're going to be doing a flight from... I believe we're going from Gatwick. Uh, hang on. Oops. Gatwick, um, we'll just choose our starting position there. Uh, we'll make it day just so it's easy. Fair weather. Right, now, okay, so what we're going to do to start off is we're going to go into our flight planner. Uh, so once again, we'll be going from EGKK. And we're going to be going to uh, Echo Hotel. Alpha Mike, which is Amsterdam International, and we're going to be flying instrument flight rules. Um, next, you want to choose. Um, it depends how you're feeling. Uh, I'm going to go low, high altitude. Mm, uh, I'll just leave it direct, just just for the simplicity of uh, of the video. So next, we're going to click Find Route. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to get our GPS, we're going to get our autopilot to follow this red line across. So next, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to click on Amsterdam and we're going to want to zoom in. And I don't know how clear this is. It's not very clear for me, so I doubt it's very clear for you guys. There's little ILS feathers, these sort of li little green feathers uh, that you can just about see. Basically what this is is this is what allows your autopilot to catch on they're basically waves that are sent out and the plane catches them and tries to line up perfectly with them so basically to come in on an ILS you need to be coming in on one of these so we will set ourselves up with this ILS feather here which is 18 right um, now what you want to do is you want to take down these here um, I'm going to print it, just because I can, um, but it might be easier to write it down, depends on you. Um, in fact, I'll write it down as well, just in case it doesn't print. Although it is printing, I can hear it. Uh, and then our heading is 185. Righty-ho, so, now we're going to come out of there. And basically, because our plane is going to be following this red line, we want to get our red line so it matches up with this ILS feather. So we're just going to quickly zoom in a little bit. And we're just going to make sure it goes straight over that ILS feather. If you want to be a little bit more precise, you see that we can see it coming in over this. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Hang on. Uh, you can delete waypoints by just going delete waypoint uh, and then zooming back in. See that? So we can see it comes over the ILS feather here. Uh, if you want to curve around the corner, then you can. Like so. Right now we're just going to click OK and we're going to save this. I'm going to move there. And we're going to go into gate medium. So, just remember you need to make sure your red line is going over the ILS feather and that you've written down the frequency and the heading. Next up, we're just going to load into the game, so I'll see you in there once it's loaded. Hi guys, what is up? So uh, now we're in the game. Uh, I'll just push back to start it up. Um, so now I'm going to get the things done that you need to get the autopilot working uh, in the actual plane now. Um, so, to get onto the red line that I was speaking about, uh, what you're going to need to do is, well, if you go over to the main panel over here at the top, so I'm just trying to concentrate on where I'm going as well at the same time, um, so you want your auto throttle arm on, this allows the autopilot to take control of the speed, you want your flight director on, this shows this pink line on here, 
Um, you're also going to want to choose your altitude to fly out to. Usually ATC will give you one, but obviously I'm not doing ATC, so I'm just going to sort of choose my own. Um, so we'll fly up to 10,000 originally. Uh, that'll do. And then we want to turn vertical speed. So this is how fast we go up to that speed. So we're going to go 1,800 feet a minute. Um, until we get to 10,000. So we want to turn altitude hold on. This means that the autopilot is being told to fly to that altitude. Um, next up we want to turn this nav GPS switch onto GPS because we want it to follow our GPS. If you press shift 3 you can see your GPS and you can see the purple line down here we're just going to follow that. Uh, so that's going to allow us to follow the GPS uh, coordinates. Uh, Vorlock, this this makes sure it actually follows the GPS or nav depending on what you have uh, locked in. And we're just coming around this corner here. I'm using the Satec uh, yoke and throttle. Unfortunately I don't have the uh, pedals for it here. Uh, the rudder pedals so I mean, I'm not expecting it to come in on the centre line. Well, I will do because I'm using uh, ILS. But I have no rudder control, so it's on auto rudder at the moment. Um, so, yeah, we're going to fly to 10,000. We're going to go at 1,800 feet a minute. And that's all that we need to set up for the main bulk of the flight. Um, in fact, we could do with setting up a speed. So, under 10,000 feet, there is a speed limit of 250 knots. So we'll just go to about 240 there. Just to make sure we're going the right way. I don't want to go the wrong way. Uh, yeah, we'll just follow it and go right on from the back. Right, so we've got altitude set. That's going to bring us up to 10,000 feet because that's what we've set it to. This is the altitude hold, which makes sure this is the individual button for the altitude. Uh, so even if the autopilot master turned on, it will only follow altitude if this is turned on. Heading, we're not going to be using heading because we're following GPS. But uh, we're not going to turn the uh, nav hold switch on yet because we don't want to turn straight away after we've taken off. Um, but this is the individual button, like I said, same with the altitude, even if this is turned on. You won't follow the heading, the nav, or the GPS unless this is switched on. Next up, we've got the auto throttle arm. Uh, we need to set our speed. And then this is the actual speed button, the independent button, even if this is on. In fact, this isn't true. You can have the, you can have the speed on even while this is off. Um, we won't worry about course yet. Uh, course is more for when you're coming in. Um... So yeah, I'm going to take off here, um, maybe a little bit late, but it's cool, it's cool, we're in the air. Uh, G for gear up, I should have pulled back a little bit harder, pull the throttle down a little bit. Uh, then we want to put our speed hold on, our altitude on, and our autopilot master switch. So now this is going to do the altitude for us, it's also going to do the speed, which is just starting to pick up now. Um, and I will start to put us into a manual turn to the right. That was the idea anyway. And in fact, what we'll do is we'll use the heading. So that you can just see, if you look on our main panel here, we can see this purple line moving. Basically, our plane will follow this purple line. Uh, so I'm just going to bring it around here and then click heading select and now we're going to turn onto that heading. Alrighty ho, so we're just going to make sure we are in front of we are around the airport enough and once I feel that we are comfortable and we are away from the airport, which we happily are what I'm going to do now is so now we're clear of the airport we're going to switch this onto, it's already on GPS, so we're just going to click Vorlock, which is the nav hold switch. So now that means we are now going to follow the yellow line. And yeah, 
be exciting. We've now not got to do anything for another 200 nautical miles. After we get to 10,000 feet, I'll put the speed up. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys uh, when we start our descent. Righty ho, guys. So uh, I'm starting to come in now. Um, I didn't didn't record at the top of my descent, um, but I came down to 10,000 originally. Um, and as you can see, if we look on here, the the turn is just here. Um, so what I've done is I've moved my speed down to 190 uh, because I'm having quite a fast, maybe not that fast, um, descent. Um, I've moved my altitude to 5,000, uh, so we're going to go down to 5,000 and we're going to get there at uh, minus 1,000 feet a minute. In fact, I'll show you this now. What you've got to do is you've got to do, sorry, shift 2. And uh, you remember that frequency from earlier, you've got to do 110.10, so... You have to do this in nav 1, uh, so and you can only do it in standby, you can't do it in active, you'll notice. And so in standby, we want to do 10, 1.1.0, 1.1.0. Then you want to switch this into the active, and then just click this, which is going to make that active, and you can tell it's active because the nav 1 bar down the bottom goes white. And basically, that is the ILS frequency that you are going to... Uh, follow in. Now what we've got to wait for is till we can hear the ILS frequency. So I'll uh, speak to you guys when we're at that stage. Righty here, so I'm just about to turn uh, turn the last corner, turn the corner onto the final, so I'm just going to run over everything and make sure I've got it all right. So my course, I haven't actually set yet, but that should be 185. Uh, my speed, uh, I'm going to be coming in at 165. I've already got full flaps. The reason I've already got full flaps is because I want to do a slow approach so I could just make sure I have enough time to run every, run it, run through everything. Because the last video I think I rushed it a little bit, so I'm just coming in for a slow approach this time. Um, heading, we don't need to worry about that now, but you want to make sure... We're going we're gonna to play with the nav uh, GPS switch as we come out of the turn. Um, Altitude, uh, I'm keeping that at about 3,000 at the moment, um, just because of where the airport is. Uh, I believe that's it over there. It's not rendered yet, but that is it over there. So 3,000 feet should give me enough time to get down to the ground after we come out of this corner. Of course, is obviously what it should be, so uh, we just want to make sure we know that the ILS is right. Because it's making that sound, um, it's making the... Morse code, which matches uh, the Morse code that was there when we found the frequency and heading. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll switch back to you guys uh, once we've uh, finished this corner. Righty here. As you can see, we are turning onto the final course now. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch to nav. And it'll bring up this diamond. Now, what happens here is this is how far to the left and right you are. And what this is, is this is your height. As soon as this reaches this line, you need to switch to the approach hold. So, we're just going to wait for that to hit this diamond. I'm also going to put my gear down now. Now the diamond has hit the white line. I've hit the approach button, which means now our plane's autopilot is going to make sure that we're always at the same height as this diamond. Going to bring the speed down to 65 knots. I thought I was landing there, but clearly my eyes were deceiving me. And I actually chose completely the wrong airport. Um, but still, it's an ILS feather, so I'm going to show you the rest of the tutorial coming into here anyway. We're always looking good. We were meant to land over there, but hey ho, we're landing here now. Just hope the runway's long enough. Looks fine. Um, these are the the red and uh, red and yellow lights you see are called pappies. Um, if they're all white, it means you're too high. If they're all red, it means you're too low. Um, if they're if you have half and half, then it means you're just right altitude. Ready ho, so we're coming in now. Uh, so what we're going to do when we come in is the basic procedure is uh, autopilot master switch off um, when you're about 100 feet and then uh, auto throttle off when you're about 50 feet. Uh, once you've got your auto throttle off, you want to uh, throttle back to idle. Um, 
and also you want your spoilers down as well. I can do that on my throttle uh, and yoke, so that's that's pretty cool though, that's pretty useful. Alrighty ho, so uh, I guess let's hope for a decent landing. I think the one I did last time was actually a pretty awful landing, so hopefully this one will be a little bit better. So we're at 100, I'm going to turn autopilot off. And you're going to want to flare as well, so you're just going to want to pull back on the stick lightly. Right, there we are. Right, so... Pulling throttle back to idle. Except I've come in too fast, so I've sort of floated up there. And then, whoa, pull back there as well. So we bounced a little bit there, which isn't too good. Reverse thrusters should be working. I'll use a little bit of brakes here just so we can come off of the taxiway here. Hopefully. That was the idea, except we've missed it. We'll come around anyway. We weren't here for a taxiing tutorial. We're here for the ILS, which is done. Uh, we'll just pull off here. Um, so yeah, sorry about the little bit fast approach. I didn't mean to uh, pull up and sort of bounce. But uh, I hope you guys uh, got the main gist of the tutorial. Um, so, I, I, I'll quickly run through everything. So, as you're coming in, obviously for your takeoff, not as you're coming in, for your takeoff, you want your altitude and your uh, speed set. Um, then obviously you've got your individual buttons for each of them here. Uh, you want your flight directors on and they show the pink lines. Uh, when you're coming in, what you need to do uh, is shift 2. You want in your nav 1, you want your active frequency that you're going to be listening out to. Once you hear the Morse code, you can switch on to from nav to GPS, which is going to bring you down. And yeah, you saw the rest of it just then. So uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I don't think this is as good as the last one. But you know, I hope you enjoyed anyway. So thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.